Hello, we are at the gates of pop culture, folks. We are on the outside where all the big corporations that are gatekeeping our very, very own pop culture are in there. They are too busy fingering our favourite characters, our beloved characters. They are too busy Although there is a gate in this garden, there is a gate in this garden which is preserved, and but it, it's it's been attacked by at all sides. It's been attacked, and we can't do nothing out. We can't us outside, us out here can't do anything about it. But there is a guy in there called Peter Jackson. He is standing firm. He is at the gates of the lord of the rings and he is standing firm he keeps getting attacked by the amazon prime lot and the the rings of power they keep barraging him with attack after attack but he's standing firm for us and lord of the rings is safe for another day it looks like they are it looks like the rings of power crew are just giving up for today they're sunk their heads in the phone and they looks like they are trying to call someone out on twitter call someone maybe sexist or racist on twitter um but oh what's this i i i look and russell t davis uh, oh what's this i see oh russell dickhead davis i mean russell t davis over there fingering the new doctor and the new doctor is all up for it and yeah they and they've gone hand in hand and then pushed over another da- uh, disabled person and told, shouted tough, tough at the top of their voices. Oh, my God, what is going on in this garden? Oh, my God, fucking what is Bob Iger doing to Disney? He's fucking, what is he doing to Mickey Mouse? He's saying, goff, he's, I can't, I can't say what he's, he's saying. <laughs> but, yeah, he's, he's saying all that to, um, to um, old Mickey Mouse. Um, yeah, they may have lost uh, the rights to Steamboat, um, but they are really having an argument, Mickey and uh, Bob Iger. And who's it? who comes to Bob Iger's rescue? The one and only Kathleen Kennedy. And she's come rescued Bob Iger, who really didn't need rescuing. It was Mickey Mouse who needed rescuing in this garden of evilness. Um we are the ones out here who are trying to get in to help our beloved characters. Fucking poor Indy is on the floor, ass in the air, just being fingered yet again by another another woke director. Oh my days, oh my days. Poor old Harrison Ford's butthole. Poor old Harrison Ford's butthole. Um, but we, uh, what? oh my God. God, oh no, what what are they doing to poor E.T.? Oh no, you can't do that to Gizmo. What are these, what are these absolute <laughs> to our beloved IPs and our beloved characters? What are these degenerates doing? They're, they're all on Twitter now and they're all pointing fingers at us. The ones out here calling us bastards. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and they're calling us all the names under the sun, but yeah, they're the ones doing the arm in the garden of pop culture. Anyway, <laughs> hope you like this little intro. Hope you, it was off the top of my head. I hope you enjoy that little intro. Yes, we are at the gates of pop culture. Yes, I am your host, Rare Anyone, and welcome back. We are here to fight for another day. Yes, I've uh, been a few weeks. Um, I generally want to keep this to a two week um episode uh, two week episode two week show every two weeks i would ideally would like to get it down to a one week show but you know work commitments and other sort of commitments and just finding the time to do it it's it's a hell of a lot of fun i love doing it's just bullshitting about pop culture films and and all that all that good stuff um i have my swear button because i will go off at some point and you'll probably want to go off at some point as well. Um, but I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you have a great year. I hope you come along with me in this year with whichever podcast it is. It could be this podcast, which at the Gates of Pop Culture, I 
bang this straight on Rumble and YouTube straight at, after I put it on the podcast so you can watch it, you can listen to it, you can do whatever you want to it. You could give it a good old fingering if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, I put it out straight away after I put it out on the podcast on Rumble and YouTube. So if you want to watch, see my beautiful face, the money maker and all that, you if you want, well, the money maker's behind me, Isom is behind me, Isom. Um, if you really want to see what I look like, go over to Rumble, go over to YouTube, Rare Eddie One, and smash that subscribe button. And if you really feel like it, hit the like button as well. That would help me out. Again, if whatever podcast provider you are listening to, please smash that follow button and please, please leave me a review. Tell me, get this out once a week, you fucking asshole. Ah, I messed up. Tell me to get this out once a week, you and, and I will get it out once a week for you guys. Ideally, I my my year goal is to put out more content, you know, more YouTube content, definitely, and more top quality podcasts, um, mainly um, me conspiracy podcast. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, that's rare. Eddie one talks. If you want to go check that out. There's more conspiracy. Um, really, early episodes. I was the early episodes. I was trying a different format, and I was trying to do a bit of pop culture and a bit of conspiracy in combined. I had some feedback, and uh, it's just a conspiracy show now, and which I love a conspiracy, especially when that list has just dropped. Um, that list has just dropped, and um, you know everyone's panicking and that i'm going to get that later on on my uh rarity one talk so if you want to check that out go please do um but anyway we are going to look at what these fuckers we are going to have a look because i've um f up <laughs> i keep i i keep swearing Although this is a podcast, so fuck it, I'm going to swear. I'm going to put myself in a little fucking corner. So we have some Star Wars news, and I have some Star Wars fans that are excited. Hey. I'm watching an old, old video of... I can't quite remember what they were protesting. I guess vegans protesting. They're all dressed up as sheep. And that, that, one, that one person at the, the start. I see a problem. You probably all, if you're watching, have seen it too. I couldn't really give a fuck, but these people would. These people are protesting. There is a guy in a black sheep costume. Could that technically be a black face? Who knows? I, could, I don't care, you know, but them people on the left really do. So I pulled up some Star Wars news because um, Star Wars are, you know, this is what happened when the new... The new feminist um, director came out and... Um, she she loves making men uncomfortable. She's the new and improved. You know, finally we're getting women on the old Star Wars um, front. We're finally getting women. You know, even though a woman has been running Star Wars since 20 fucking 12. But finally we're getting a woman project. Sorry, Paddy Jenkins. But we're finally getting a woman's project. And this was... Uh, I have I have sound from when this was dropped, people were so excited and we have sound. <laughs> <coughs> Play it for the people in the back. <laughs> one more time. Uh, yeah, that they were so excited. We have that one party streamer thing going and that, that was it. Um, there was a news here. Um, it's from the Telegraph. I'm not fucking signing into the Telegraph to fucking read it. Um, and there's probably a way of doing it, but, you know, I am a boomer. I'm fucking getting on in age, and, you know, I'm, I'm no young whippersnapper uh, anymore, even though I think I am, but I am not. I'm bald. That's why I've got a hat on. 
no bad trips. Um, but anyway, this I clicked on it, um, but as you do, you got to fucking sign it. I ain't not fucking signing into shit. Um, Star Wars director Shameen Abay Choi isn't too feminist. She's too inexperienced. Well, we can agree on one thing. She is too ex inexperienced. She is. She's only done, well, she's done a couple of episodes of Miss Marvel, which <laughs> severely needed we work done to him. And, uh, yeah, she's been given a whole fucking movie about Ray. Did anyone really ask for a film about Ray? You know, I don't get me wrong. I do like Daisy Daisy Ridley. I think she's a beautiful woman. I do. That's, that's my opinion. I think she's a beautiful woman. As a Star Wars character, fucking god-awful. Ray was absolute god-awful. Absolute stupid as fuck. Stupid as fuck. But as an actor, she, I think she's a good actor, and uh, and and like I say, I think she's quite uh, quite beautiful. Um, but we're all we're gonna dump on Star Wars. I'm fucking I'm gonna dump as much as I can on Star Wars and fucking Doctor Who. No, it's not water, and no, it's not vodka. Oh, oh, oh that would be a combination. Not water and vodka, obviously that you know, um, but fucking a whole pint glass of vodka. Although you Americans, you don't really call it a pint, do you? You just call it a large beer. Why don't you call it a pint? I think I'm missing out on something there. Why don't they call it a pint? Why don't you Americans call it a pint? So please, someone answer me that question. Because I, I can remember going to Vegas. Um, sorry, this this in pop culture is just. Um, I was in Vegas and I went to first pub I went to. Can I have a pint of? I think do I think it was. I can't quite remember what beer it was. It may and likely have been a cider. Um, but I asked for a cider, a pint of cider, and I was like, "What?" I said, can I have a pint of cider? And he's like, what? Is that, yeah, we've got cider, but what, what do you mean pint? And and then I got talk, and it, it large. They only do large, and it's not it, it's not a pint glass either. You can get them really oversized glasses, um, which I've got a few of them, but, you know, when you just go to, to a pub in England, you can I have a pint, please. And... And that's it, you know. But anyway, that's uh, my little crazy rant over woods. Um, yes, so the new Ray director, she loves making men uncomfortable and she loves making, really making men uncomfortable. Now, that, that, um, that clip is eight years um, out of context. Or eight, it, from eight years ago, so maybe the context isn't because there's a lot of new Star Wars people all thinking, you know, this was a, a Star Wars thing. No, this because she has directed a couple of hard hitting documentaries. Uh, one was about honor killings, and one was about where um, um, acid burns. A woman got uh, thrown acid in her face. Um, these are all um, women from the Middle East from predominantly Muslim countries. Um, and funnily enough, she got sued by whatever women with who got thrown as acid in the face. You know, uh, I can't quite find the news on where it was, but I, I seem to remember reading that a while ago. And yeah, it's uh, it's one of them shit show. I, I, don't, I don't think this film will ever... Well, no, I think... I, I'd say I flip-flopped. Um, I think this film will definitely come out because Marvel, uh, Marvel, Star Wars, Lucas Films, well, basically Disney, have put their director, they casted their director because that's what that's how they get directors now. They cast them. She's got no experience. By sounds of it, she doesn't really know what Star Wars is. Um, and... 
there's a couple of clips out there. So there's a couple of um, TikTok clips, so they're about two to three minutes long. Uh, one, she was you know, excited about being the Star Wars director. She got about 30 seconds in, and then that was it. No more Star Wars talk. The everything, everything else was about, you know, heroes she's met, you know, uh, people who she's met uh, doing on her other work, a documentary work and all that. Nothing else about Star Wars. And quite a lot of these clips coming out from her that to do with Star Wars, she talks maybe about 30 seconds worth of Star Wars, and that's about it. You've got the old fucking door button beeping. Fucking thing is driving me crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't have a crazy button on here, do I? It's doing that to me, the big old fucking door letting button thing. Do my nothing. Um, but anyway, let me continue. So she, she is. I've lost myself now. So yeah, I I honestly think this film I, I flip flopped. I I didn't think this film would come out, but I do think this film will come out because like I said, Lucasfilm have casted this director and she's not only a woman, but she is a woman of colour. So and they always put this out there. So there was a there was um there was an article I was reading the other day day um Yeah, so there was an article I was reading the other day, and in the first paragraph, it was a long ass paragraph, but the first paragraph was like introduce, introducing Shamina and telling her that what she had done, and then the fourth sentence in, the fourth sentence in was all about her being the first female, the first female of color director in the Star Wars history. So that there, that that thing there is their shield, that they have a shield now because when this film does come out and it will bomb, it will bomb and it will be criticised to fuck. And a lot of new Star Wars fans will probably criticise this to fuck, but yet they will bring out this shield this shield consisting of female Star Wars director and female of coloured Star Wars director. And that's their shield. And they will stand behind that shield, pointing out, they'll point at Disney and Lucasfilm, will point at you guys, at us, for being the racist and sexist and you know homophobic people we are. Yet they're the ones, Disney, are being the ones being sued by 9,000 women for gender equality pay gap or something bollocks like that. And then another pay, um, another um, claim um, towards them is uh, allegation, sorry, is Disney hiding one of their senior executives 
from sexually assaulting a woman and they uh you know it's come up she's suing him but they tried hiding this executive they tried squashing this i'm not not 100 percent i'm getting i'm getting that story wrong but there's people legal mindset out there he's doing a fantastic job um rk outpost is doing a hell of a job if you're not following rk outpost what are you doing sorry um go follow him he's doing a hell of a job on it so they have like nine odd thousand women um fucking suing them and they it, they seem they can't seem to get away from lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit so yeah they're the ones who are always projecting and they're the ones who are generally doing the fucking wrongdoing the disney generally finger their, their female employees um and it's not a good sign um but anyway that's that's enough of fucking star wars let me know your thoughts on star wars are you excited for the ray movie is anyone actually excited for this Ray movie? Um, maybe the uh, five people activists who this sound comes from um, excited for it, but the majority of people are not excited for this film. I have a good friend who may or may not listen to this, and he's looking forward to it, and I hope it's good for him because he's a great he's a great guy. Yeah, you know he. He knows he knows a hell of a lot more Star Wars than I I know, um, but he he generally tries to look on the the brighter side of things. So he way a lot of us are criticizing Star Wars at the minute. He will he maybe doesn't doesn't, um, but he even he's starting to wake up and and yeah he he's, he's knowing this is sh is going to shit. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's that's enough for Star Wars for myself. I'm gonna document documentary. I'm gonna document it as much as I can. I'm gonna try and make as many YouTube videos of it as I can. I'm gonna try and laugh and call them names and call them dickheads as much as I can because they are dickheads um, for doing this sort of shit to the for fans, the fans that have walked away. Um, there's not many fan that is left. There is, there is a couple of fans, genuine fans, but a lot of the fans that are left that are so-called fans are more activists. Uh, these fans generally don't spend money on going to films. They would rather pirate on the high on the uh, on the high seas, but yet they'll get on Twitter and scream about it. And then they'll scream about it for failing. You know, blaming us for why it's failing. When maybe if they had gone paid for the movie, it might have done okay. Well, no, I don't think it would have done okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's fair for that. So, the Doctor. Oh my God, the Doctor. I've done a hell of a lot of videos on this just recently. I am not a Doctor Who fan. Um, my probably my favorite Doctor Who is Christopher Eccleston's. Um, out of them all, David Tennant is probably, if I was to say, an iconic Doctor of the new era, David Tennant. But Matt Smith is probably up there, is probably is on the same level as um, David Tennant. But oh, shoot, he got was Doctor not it russell dickhead david uh, sorry russell t davis and the other guy chibnall have absolutely destroyed this franchise and and for i've been uh, not having arguments but i've been talking to a lot of people on youtube and a lot of people because I, I, I said disney have a creative um they have some creative power on Doctor Who now. And people say, no, they don't. No, they don't. But do. You are lying to yourself. Disney do have creative control. Maybe not a f maybe not the overarching control, but they do have some control. So stop lying to yourself. Disney do have control. Now. Oh, 
So, Digital Spy, Doctor Who's Christmas special beats rating, uh, special ratings beat the final anniversary uh, episode. I don't think that was pretty hard hard to do. They both did fucking horribly. Um, what, what are Digital Spy saying about it? Um, so, the viewing figures for Doctor Who's 2023 Christmas special have been revealed. Um with the episode beating David Tennant's final 60th episode, which, what, the episode where, you know, you you were pandering and you were fucking, when you were all out fucking um, identity, identity politics and, you know, trans allegory and, you know, men are shit and every, everyone else is great, but men are shit. I, in that episode or the whole special well that's generally the whole special the whole three episodes um but i don't think it was hard to to do um but the church on ruby road which i, f I don't think it got a high rating on um uh, rotten tomatoes i think it was in the 40s from the audience score Obviously, the critics give it 100% because they're all dirty de degenerates. Um, but the Church on Ruby Road, which saw uh, Shooty Gatwood's first full outing as the 15th iteration of the iconic Time Lord, again, Doctor Who and the writers have broken their own rules. So there's not one Doctor now, there's two Doctors. So rather than regenerating into a new Doctor... He regenerate, he by generated, and let's get that BBC got that word by in there. We got that by word in there. Nothing wrong if you're fucking bi or lesbian or gay or, or from the alphabet mafia. Nothing wrong with that. It's the way you do it, the way you're forcing it upon people, the way you force people to go around your your religion. No, it doesn't work like that. And people are waking up. People are starting to get fed up of this shit. We all saw that video of the um, the airline guy um, who come down hard on that trans person, saying, "I can I can throw you out of this airport." You know, three days before Christmas. Absolute chad that guy um, and that trans person really fucking really went back into its shell and yeah, maybe I fucked up here. People have had enough. We can't, we, especially here in the West, you can be what you want to be. No one cares. No one cares. But when you force it on kids and when you force it on just the normal person to go, um, to go along your, your mental illness, it's, there's, there's people out there that are genuine trans people. And there's people out there who are latching onto it. And they're the, they're the ones that ruin it for the genuine trans people. And there's a lot of trans people that agree with me on that. Um, but yeah. Um, but anyway, let's. I, I, I'm in a rant mood. Anyway, let's uh, I'll continue. Um, I'll, I'll continue. I fucking right ranted myself out of uh, where I am now. Um, Sorry for for you guys who were just maybe tuned in for the first time. This is my rants and my mind um, um, go way out there. Um, that's why I like a conspiracy, I guess. <laughs> anyway, the 15th iteration of the iconic time, that's where I got to. Yeah, so the the create not the creators, but the 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 Russell T. Dickhead Davis of the world and the Chibnalls have broken the, their law. Yes, it was. Um, yes, this by by gen isn't it's sort of written somewhere where it maybe happened once, but they've they've maybe writ maybe they have written it in now. So the Doctor has broken its own law um, by by generating. The only reason they have done that, because this Doctor, uh, Shooty Guy, were, his series will fail, but now they have a David Tennant to fall back on. They have a David Tennant to fall back on. 
Um, they can bring his doctor back in with and whenever they will. And they will have to bring him in. They will bring him in because this show is just going to take a giant shit. Um, the BBC can't quite flush it down the toilet. Um, but yeah, they will bring him out. They will bring Tennant out and I, f I believe it'll be within the first season if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm, I, but he's. We are going to see David Tennant. We will hundred percent see David Tennant. Um, but anyway, so the Time Lord and his new companion Ruby, <sighs> another Ruby. Um, Sunday, Millie Gibson pulled in one point seven nine million viewers via the BBC. <clears throat> I do apologise for that. Um, I do have a curse button. I you, you fucking asshole. Oh, why did we, why do you all do that? I'm not signing in to read shit. Uh, why do I need to register? Continue reading for free. Digital spy, you absolute scumbags. Absolute fucking scumbags. Um, but anyway, so this, this made me fucking howl. Um, deadline, I did a video on this uh, the other day. BBC hits back at complaints about transgender Doctor Who character. The show will continue proudly celebrating its diversity. In one of the articles, it was from The Independent, and uh, in the paragraph, um, one of the paragraphs, I, I can see it. Um, sorry, I, I haven't pulled it up, um, but I can see it. It's um, They... We're proud. They're talking about this this trans person in this in this um in in the show. There's this beast, the star beast, the star beast. Yeah, the star beast special. Um, and and they're saying it was natural and educational. Now, if you're having to write, it was natural. Was it really natural? If you're having to put out there, oh, this is natural. Oh, oh, don't you agree this is natural? Was it really natural? Really, was it natural? No. Educational, yeah, I go down and, and watch my, I make sure everything I watch for enjoyment purposes is educational. No. You bunch of fucking assholes. You were doing it like... Disney and Marvel and Hollywood are doing it. You are doing it so you are brainwashing the younger audience viewer to go along your agenda-driven, fueled, fucking. You need you you need straight people because if there's no more straight people, there ain't gonna be no gay people. Fucking hell. Well, unless you invent gay robots, I suppose. Um, but you need straight people. You need straight people more than what, yeah, we need gay people. I'm sorry. I I love gay people. I do. Um, But this, we're getting to a point where, you know, people are starting to not care about this um, anymore um, because you are doing this sort of shit. And they did this to indoctrinate the little people watching this program. Because this program is aimed at really at little ones, teens and young adults, and they're just doing it just like the schools are doing it to indoctrinate the kids. You know that's why we're seeing so many people, so many young people coming out or being trans or being you know non-binary. That's why we're seeing so many young people because they're so fucking confused. Now, yes, I agree. There is trans people out there. Hundred percent, hundred percent agree. But it's like a one percent, not the percent we're getting at the minute. Yeah, it's it's not. I, I can remember talking to someone, and and she said something about you know, yeah. You know, there's only two genders because there is. There's only two genders, male and female. She got fired. She was 
in the educational, um, I don't think she was a teacher. I think she was like some sort of, I think she was a lab technician. And I'm sorry if you're listening and I've fucked your job title up. And she'd know like she's in a much happier place now. Um, and more money. Um, but she, she wasn't quite a teacher. I think she was a lab technician, but she got fired for saying there's two genders. Yeah. If that pisses you off, then, that's a you problem, not a me problem. And this is for you. Um, but anyway, <laughs> again, <coughs> I've got a cough button to use. Well, it's not a cough button. It's more of a set button. Um, sorry, I will try and edit that cough out. If I haven't, I do apologize. Um, but anyway, so... So the BBC had brushed off comments. Oh, I don't think I read the article, did I? No, yeah, I did. Yeah, it, the title. The BBC has brushed off complaints from the Doctor Who uh, reviewers who argue that the inclusion of Yasmin Finney's transgender character, Rose, was inappropriate. They have a point. The British... The British broadcaster, the good old BBC, British, who, let's not forget, the BBC hid Jimmy Savile for a long fucking time. Anyway, the BBC received 144 messages from disgruntled viewers. And, that's, you know, they've come out and they're happy about it. You've not been on Twitter, BBC. You've not been on Twitter. You've not been on social media. Oh, I know you've been on social media, BBC. There's a lot more than 144 messages. There is a hell of a lot more. Well, anyway, let's continue. Um, about the uh, Heart Stopper Star Finley's appearance in the Star B special, with some arguing it was it definitely anti male. It if anything, you could have. You couldn't get away from anti-male in this episode. <sighs> anti-male is an understatement. It was so far anti-male. Um, in an update to Complaints Response, the website, the BBC said, as regular viewers of Dot Who will be aware, the show has, has and will always continue proudly celebrate diversity and reflect the world we live in. What, the Middle East? You're not reflecting on the Middle East? That's how fucking pompous, pompous the BBC are. BBC needs to be taken down a peg or two. They need their licence fee scrapped for what they did to the 70, over 75-year-olds. They are disgusting. BBC is disgusting. I just... Looked over there and Ice Cube responds to Kate Williams' claim on Friday after next film. Or Cat Williams, sorry, Kate Williams. My dyslexia at its finest there. Um, <clears throat> hmm, I won't mind the next Friday. Um, but yeah, um, the BBC are disgusting de degenerates scumbags. Fucking scumbags. Uh, this is... You walk into the BBC headquarters and this is what you get. <laughs> oh, I found a new sound pad. Um, anyway, so enough for the BBC, BBC and Doctor Who. <laughs> and we are going, this show comes out on the 10th of this week. Um, well, next week, sorry. Um, Marvel's Echo. Echo, is anyone looking forward to Echo? This show, Marvel tried, tried to fucking make disappear, but because it's a disabled woman of colour, who's also just disabled, so disabled on like three, two counts, sorry. Um, she's, she hasn't got a leg or bottom half of a leg and she's deaf. Hmm. And they couldn't, get rid of it they had to put it out and what they're doing because most disney plus shows come out weekly 
if I'm re thinking of fucking Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion. Um, do I have Secret Invasion? <laughs> um, um, was a weekly thing. Now this they are dropping all at once. So rather than people talk shit about it for six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, whatever, how many episodes it is, they're just going to be talking shit about it for maybe a week, maybe two. <clears throat> and some of the fight scenes in this, some of the fight scenes in this look terrible, absolute terrible. I would pull them up, but I'm starting to understand YouTube a little bit better. So I will probably get copyright claimed or, or whatever. I don't want to. Um, I'm still not 100% sure. So please, if someone's out there, maybe you could give me a hand on that bit. Let me know what I am able to do. I, I keep looking into it and I keep getting myself lost in, because like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm a boomer at the end of the day, I guess. I'm a twat as well. I'm an absolute dickhead. Oh. Uh, a lot of people will call me a dickhead, and that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, they are dropping this show all at once. That's how proud they are. That's how proud they are of this indigenous woman. Um, this woman of color, this disabled woman of color. They've they've gone through that that tech, uh, tick box, haven't they? Tick, oh, tick, tick hell tick sign her up she's never acted though uh, Kevin Faggy sign her up she, have you seen all the ticks we've got get her signed but she's not been in anything sign her up I don't care sign her up that's what had gone on in our meeting tick 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 holy shit sign her give her a fucking 35 million fucking contract and get her signed but Kevin Feige, she's not even acted in anything. I don't care. Look at how many things she's just ticked off. And that's how that meeting would have gone down. <laughs> um, and then Kevin Feige had seen how this show has progressed and said, oh, shit, we need to cancel it. You what? We put so much money into it? Oh, fuck's sake. We'll just drop it all at once. Um... <clears throat> Apparently, Daredevil is in it. We all know Kingpin's in it. <coughs> I forget to use that button. Um, apparently, King... Well, apparently, King, Kingpin is in on it. How cooked does Kingpin look? The first trailer, I've got to be honest, looked okay. But it's a long way from the trailer. <laughs> it's a long way. And then seeing a couple of the fight scenes. Look like everyone's hitting fresh air. And that's supposed to be the finished article. Um, some of the uh, spoilers we've seen. Supposed to be the finished article. Some of the characters look like they are hitting fresh fucking air. Oh my god. Apparently Daredevil is in on it. Um... How long for? I don't know. Um, but they've. I can't wait for the January the tenth. I can't wait to see this. Um, it's on Hulu. Um, it's on Disney Plus. And yeah, I, I just can't can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. And uh, yeah. Uh, I have pulled a couple of things. What was that? What was that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, January 10th, um, all episodes. Um, all episodes of Echo will be released on Disney Plus on Wednesday, the 10th of January. Due to differing time zones, the episode will... Be... <coughs> Sorry. Um... Due to differing time zones, the episode will be released late on Tuesday 9th for US viewers, while UK viewers will be able to watch this early hours of Wednesday the 10th. It's not even getting a prime time slot. 
that's not even getting a prime time slot. Disney Plus are just fucking Marvel are just slotting it in where where there's nothing in or where there's not going to be no one up. Holy shit. Apparently someone I've heard, you probably heard this too, um, I think I was watching Friday Night Tights and uh, I'm pretty sure they said someone had watched it, the first three episodes, and they said it was boring. <clears throat> boring. But I guess, you know, having hearing privileges means, yeah, yeah. So, a quick little clip from um, Echo interview. Um, oh, I, I would butcher them fucking names. Um, let's see, I would butcher them fucking names. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, nope. Nope. I would, I'm going to butcher them fucking names. Oh, shit. I've just clicked in YouTube. <laughs> Fuck, say. Let's just play the clip from these fucking. Dicks. I'm not gonna have to I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, I think what I learned about myself uh, portraying this was um, that I have a lot of um, hearing privilege. <laughs> oh, hearing privilege. Oh, yes, I've got hearing privilege. So, so I guess I have a card I could pull out. I am type 1 diabetic, so... You normal people, you have normal people privileges. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, you fucking asshole! Oh, that's oh, where's the one? I had, oh, I, had... I did have another one where. Where's that other clip gone? I had another clip. I had another right, folks. I had another clip. It's fucked off. Um. Yeah, but I guess you guys with hearing privileges, um, you know, you lucky sons of bitches, you hearing privileges. Um, for all those with hearing privileges, get up, down, um, with all them hearing privileges. Um, where's the air horn? Um, you lucky people with hearing privileges. Um, so does that mean, you know, does... She feel lucky with hearing privileges, and um, you know, with all this nonsense of you know people with privilege. Um, are you gonna maybe deafen yourself? If you wouldn't have that privilege, I guess. Uh, you know, that's one way of doing it. But I suppose if you're a woman of color, you know, you don't have the privileges of the white person, do you? So you know, she's she's still down on the privilege scale. That's absolute fucking bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Let's um, play a little bit. Yeah. I have a, a lot of hearing privilege uh, being somebody who walks around the world as a, as a hearing person. And I think I was, I was also honored to be able mm. to begin to learn ASL. Oh my God. As a hearing person. Yes, well done. Well done, you. Well, I'm, I'm still learning ASL and want to continue moving forward long after this project. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just felt really fortunate and 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 got a glimpse into what it's what it's like for our our deaf. So being a type one diabetic, that type one person, <laughs> being a type one diabetic, the thing I really would need to see in the next Marvel project is a type one diabetic superhero. And when he's in the middle of a fight scene, he needs to check his blood glucose sugar. He needs to check his blood sugar levels and maybe do an injection or eat some sugar. I really need to see that. I need to see that, else I will not feel represented. Shut white boy. You don't get any you don't get to speak. Holy shit. That's what that's what will happen. That's what the fuck will happen. Ah. Uh. We've gone so crazy with these these made up terms of white privileged and fucking hearing <laughs> hearing privileges. It's crazy. I don't have no fucking privilege, but yet they say I will have privilege because of the colour of my skin. Sounds a little bit racist to me. 
and to allow others. Relations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to piggyback on that is oh, we take a lot for granted and it's a privilege, like you said, to walk in their world and to be able to be their guest and to know that. Did I, did we just really hear what you just said? On that is we take a lot for granted and it's a privilege, like you said, to walk in their world what? and to be able to. What's the crazy button? What? It's been a privilege to walk in their world. How about our world? It's just a privilege to be on this planet. Yes, there's some unfortunate people have who have lost sight, who've never been born with sight, who've never been born with ears, who have been born with dis you know so much fucking horrible shit out there that could have you know been born with could have been born in china in the middle east you could have been born in the middle east a woman how about this beautiful world of ours we have privileged of being able to get up each and every day no matter what color the skin no matter what problems we may or may not have Yes, there's people that are fortunate. Yes, there really is. And a lot of these fortunate people work for Disney. Like the Bob Igers, the Kathleen Kennedys, the um, Kevin Feige's. Um, a lot of these fortunate people work in Hollywood. Work in Hollywood. Like Oprah Winfrey. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You know, and if you believe some of the conspiracies, Oprah Winfrey likes to finger of people as well. Um, what was that? That one guy who's 50 Cent, actually, that one guy, fucking 50 Cent, fucking 50 Cent, hell of a follow, <laughs> um, saying that she stole a lot of black people's, um, she stole a lot from black people and didn't give fuck all back. Um, yeah, um, it is what it is, I suppose, at the end of the day. There's, there's fucking out there. There really is out there. And there's, there's just the normal person, you know, the normal person who wants to get up and do some good in this world. Um, but anyway, <laughs> walk, walk along someone's privileges. This is what goes through that guy's head. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Anyway, so so I was looking through Simpson games the other day and fuck me. These some of them are collectibles now. And the Simpson game itself on on the 360. I've seen it for a lot cheaper than that, but £110. The Simpsons Hit and Run retro game is £220. Good game. But then you get on the PlayStation 2, uh, The Simpsons Skateboarding. Is that just an empty box? Or was there a disc in that box? Oh, there was a disc. Um, for 20 quid. So hit and run it is fucking hit and run it is getting out there. Hit and run on Nintendo, one hundred and seventeen pound. Where's the um... so is hit and run and road rage the same thing or is that just um, a different game? But yeah, I've I've been looking for a Simpson game to play on the PlayStation. Um I've also been wanting to play Hit and Run and Road Rage um again. But no hoping them play me playing in them games because they are a pretty penny. Absolute pretty, pretty fucking penny. Oh. Will it show it on the PS5? No. no. It's a product. 
And for a guy who used to play Simpsons Tapped Out, I used to play that daily. I loved that game because there was a point in me when you put anything Simpsons in front of me and I love it. Um, the Simpsons sort of died a little bit. Um, one would say it's been, you know, 10, season 10 was maybe at the peak there's a lot of season after 10 that are just fucking perfect. Um, I think the day it started dying when, you know, people came out and say, Hank, Hank maybe shouldn't voice a poo anymore. Or, you know, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's not good. It's not good. Um, I'd love to play Road Rage again, but it's like fucking 220, um, 220 fucking quid. I'm not paying that. Well, that's seven, that's actually fucking eight quid. Eight quid, you, you dickhead. What's that on? Four shops. No, Simpsons Road Rage. Ah, oh, that's Road Rage. Hit and run. So hit and run is, hit, sorry, I'm, I'm fucking leaning away from the mic. I'm, I'm more interested in the game. Sorry, yeah, sorry, folks. Um, so there is hit and run and road rage. So which one? I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, so this. Yeah. So which one's hit and run then? Oh, that's the skateboarding game, you knobhead. Yeah, that's that's the one. I, 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 I always thought they were both the same game, but they're not. I don't think they are. But that's eight quid. I might get that. I might get that and uh, fucking stream it. What do you guys reckon? Um, hit and run, 220 fucking quid, though. <laughs> Oh, is it? Is it the is it the same game? Yes, it is. It is. It is. Um, I think Hit Runs the 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 most popular the, the Road Rage, but I remember playing the Simpson game and absolute loving the Simpsons game, absolute loving this game. I haven't really completed many games in my life. The Simpsons game I completed. Um. I don't even think I completed either one of these games. Um, Grand Theft Auto Vice City I completed, and Grand Theft Auto V I completed. I haven't completed many games in my whole gaming career. Um, I'm more of your online multiplayer guy, and now I'm so into Fortnite. I am so deep, far, far down at a rabbit hole of Fortnite, far down. Fucking hell, Simpson Road Rage. Just the disc itself is 120 quid. What? So you could you could spend 120 quid or get it for eight quid. Maybe you collected that there, maybe um on the original Xbox it's 330 quid. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. That's... Let's have a quick look on Amazon. What is it on Amazon? X Klein. So I can get the Simpsons game for £3.25, 21 used and new offers. Simpsons comic game on. Okay. Uh, Road Rage. 50 quid. Um, Here in the UK, 50 quid. One left. Um, the skateboarding game is 32 quid these are all on Amazon um, I went down this fucking rabbit hole so PlayStation 3 and Simpsons game 159 160 quid it seems like it's the um, Japanese version um The original Xbox 360 Simpsons game, 32, the Wii. F fucking 
just over four pound. Hit and run. Let me see if I can click on it. It might give me the option of um, road rage. Road rage, 50 quid. Was that the one going for fucking 200? No, it's hit and run, wasn't it? Ah, oh, fucking, I can't remember. I think, no, I think it was fucking uh, road rage that was going for. <clears throat> No, it was hit and run going for, for, for a lot of money. But it clearly it won't give me any pictures. It only gives me them pictures. Um, does it have any any offers? Uh, six. Um, Forty nine quid, sixty four quid used. See more. Yeah. I don't want to add to the basket. But anyway, so, um, so if you can, if you can find yourself a cheap copy of, um, let's go all the way back to that, um, if you can find yourself if you can find it on the X, the original Xbox hit and run or road rage hold on to it because I predict that these hit and run and road rage are going to be not priceless but they will they, they're already going for money at the minute but like there I could get that, that for 8 quid but what, what shops are on I bet it's on a fucking dodgy shop in it yeah what the fuck? I clicked on the right one. What the fuck? eBay for <laughs> 1200 and online on com 80 quid fucking so it's not even eight pound so why could i've got that for eight pound then you fucking knobheads absolute fucking dumbheads um hit and run <laughs> there we go custom case simpsons hit and run no disc no disc no manual gamecube seven pound fucking hell you're probably out so maybe if you can maybe get his cheap version of um the simpsons game um skateboard again that's still relatively cheap it's a price dropped on this so yeah it's a just 200 quid on eBay. Just 200 quid. Oh, let's go quickly go back in that. More shops. There we go. You can get it for eight quid. Yeah. 8bitbeyond.com. The Simpsons Road Rage PS2 game. eBay. 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 19. <clears throat> Maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, um, let's see, it's probably, uh, no gear, no, oh, no, it's got a disc, it has a disc, eight quid. Hmm, eight, well, seven pound, 99 pence, 99 whole pennies, seven pound and 99 whole pennies, um, eight bit beyond, um, <laughs> quantity one. Oh, uh, let's have two. <laughs> um, what can I? Can I? Uh, got it. Buy with shop pay. Uh, more payment options. Mm. I might 
get that. Um, I really, really wanted to be playing, and and the the kicker is, I had these games. I had these games sitting, just gathering dust a long, long time ago. God, imagine if I'd have just held on to him. So I relatively look after games and, and stuff like that. CDs, on the other hand, no. Um, but games are generally, and DVDs, generally relatively looked after them. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I thought I would end on that. Um, if you can, if you can find one of them three games, so the Simpsons game, Simpsons Hit and Run, Simpsons Road Rage. Now, I will add in the Simpsons skateboarding game. If you can find any of them four games for relatively cheap, in relatively good order, <clears throat> you're probably out of luck with um, Hit and Run. But the other three, if you can find a cheapish... We went on Amazon, and I'm pretty sure I can get the Simpsons game for like a fiver. Um, but if you can, and if you're in relatively good condition, like say that Simpsons game for maybe five, and maybe the box and is a bit crap, but you can you can get a new box. Maybe you can you can take it somewhere and improve this quality, you know, without maybe maybe at risk to the game itself. But if it plays. You know, you, you could maybe, and you can maybe have yourself a little small fortune in a few years' time. Um, myself, I will try and get, I'd try and get all the four of these games, but I, I hit them one. I do not think, unless they come out on the PlayStation Store, <laughs> um, which I don't think they will. Um, I will try and try. And, uh, yeah, I suggest you maybe do, and there's definitely old games out there, because I was looking, and Silent Hill is a fucking bomb, absolute bomb. It's um, it's an absolute bomb. Um, I had that on PS1. It's like 90 quid. 90 quid for a, res for a decent-looking copy. 90 quid. Some of these old games are just going to fetch... I, I just chucked out a Mega Drive. Well, not just a few years ago, chucked out a decent looking Mega Drive with a sort of damaged box just because I didn't have the room. I'm so pissed at myself. Ah. I don't think I had any games for it, but I think them games are relatively easy to come over. A few Americans out there, Sega Genesis, we call it the Mega Drive over here. Um, for you guys, I think you call it the Genesis. Oh, I'm so, so annoyed at myself. <clears throat> the amount of, the amount of games I had and looking at them now, thinking that the small fortunes, I, I had small fortunes at the time that weren't, obviously, you know, you could barely fucking give them away. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on these um, old school games. Let me know if I'm uh, barking up the wrong tree. If I am, please let me know. Please let me know if you're looking for Echo. Let me, uh, I'll full screen myself. Let's get the moneymaker back up. Um, let me know your thoughts on Echo, on Marvel's Echo. Are you looking forward to it? Or is it something you've not even heard about? Let me know your thoughts on Doctor Who. A lot of you have been letting me know your thoughts on Doctor Who on my YouTube channel, which I fucking love. I absolutely love. Yes, even a lot of them disagree with me. I still love having a sort of conversation with you. And again, if you disagree with me, I would happily have a conversation with you. Um, you know, I happily have a conversation with you. Um, and again... With Star Wars, I'd happily have a conversation. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me on anything. This has been, we have been at the gates. We've been rattling them gates, trying to get in. Um, we've been trying to get in and we've failed. 
But luckily, Peter Jackson's in there. He is standing firm. He is standing firm. And he's fucking... He's keeping that Lord of the Rings gate in pristine position. In position. Uh, pristine... Um, I've fucking had a brain fart. What's the word I'm looking for? Pristine condition. You asshole. Um... <laughs> Sorry for the coughing. Sorry. I will try and edit them out. I will. But I really wanted this show to be as little editing as possible. I want all my fuck-ups in. All my um, absolute fuck-ups and bad takes and good takes. I want them all in. Because I want this to be as genuine as possible. I am not a hateful person. I may come across as a hateful person. But I love every single one of you. Um, even if you hate me, I still love you. Unless you fucking fingered someone I know. Then, yeah, maybe I do hate you. But I am a loving, nice guy. Which we all are. We're just pissed off at the people who are destroying our favourite and beloved characters. And IPs and comics and games. We're just pissed off. And we are standing up and we are starting to say and and speak our minds. Um, but anyway, that's another week at the gates, outside the gates of pop culture. If you are watching this on YouTube or Rumble, please hit that subscribe button and please smash that like button. That would be awesome. If you are listening to these on a podcast provider, please hit that follow button. Please leave me a review. That would be fucking awesome. If you didn't like this episode, I thank you anyway for listening slash watching. I've been your host, Red Eddie One. We have been at the gates of pop culture. I will see you in my next episode. Peace.